This is Svalbard, home to a variety of wildlife, from the largest whales to the magnificent yet endangered polar bear, which roam over the harsh icy archipelago. Here, we will prove that life in the Arctic is as passionate and dramatic as any on Earth. The white brute, the most powerful predator, the polar bear. This magnificent beast is searching for food on the shores of Svalbard. It is summer and most of the ice has retreated. The polar bear's normal hunting techniques are no longer possible. Food is more scarce and the bears need to find other sustenance elsewhere. This fully grown male is searching for kelp on the beach. Bears are omnivores, but they prefer to eat meat. So the kelp that has been washed up by the surf is not so appetizing. He wants to go out to sea and search for a seal. But after having been soaked by a wave, he has changed his mind. Hungry and angry, he leaves the beach. This mother is raising two cubs. It is an exhausting process. First, she must spend all winter in a hole in a snowdrift, surviving off her fat reserves, until her cubs are strong enough to come out. Then, she has to feed and teach two extra bears. They too have come down to the beach to find food. She is slowly making her way down the shoreline. Although she is only walking, she is taking massive strides, and her walk is in fact quite fast. Further down the beach, there is a group of walruses, which she has her eyes on. The walrus take no chances. They instantly plunge into the water. She probably would be no threat, except to the calves, but they won't risk it. The walrus are at home in the water. Even with thick insulating layers of blubber that weighs them down, they are quite fast and maneuverable when in the water. As well as thick fat, they also have thick, hard hide which protects them both from the elements and from attacks. Their iconic meter-long tusks aren't just for show. They have many purposes. They can use them to haul their ginormous bodies out of frigid waters or to break breathing holes in the ice from below during winter. Both males and females have tusks, but males also employ them aggressively for fighting over mating rights and defending themselves from attacks. However, they don't use their tusks to hunt and kill prey. They mainly eat mollusks and other small crustaceans. They locate them from under the sand with their highly sensitive whiskers. Then, they suck the unfortunate creature up and eat it whole, shell and all. These marine mammals are highly sociable. They always travel in the herd and they communicate both by bellowing and body actions. Here, they are curious of the boat. But when they get too close, they dart off usually because the walrus at the front decides that they are too close and they all panic and swim away. They have evaded disaster and the mother bear walks off walrusless. These two males have been very lucky. They have a right to be standing proudly on this iceberg. One of them has used an extreme amount of stealth and power and has caught a bearded seal. This has not been caught in the usual way of waiting by a breathing hole until a seal pops up. He has caught this one while it rested on an iceberg. The bear swam slowly towards it, diving down so the seal won't see it. Then, when he got close enough, he pounced out of the water and before the seal could escape, he was on it and won himself a meal. There are two bears here, not because they are related, but a bearded seal is a big carcass, and it would easily fill two bears, so there's no need for a fight. 
The seal is almost finished, but when food is scarce, the bear wants to top up on his fat reserves, for his next meal is not certain. The seagulls here are mainly the Glaucus girl. They are ever hopeful that they can steal some scraps from the bear and get an easy meal, instead of hunting from something themselves. However, the bear hasn't left them much to eat. Full after the meal, the bear feels happy to rest on the iceberg and pause from his long-going quest for more food. After he has rested, he swims back for the mainland. Polar bears are now classed as marine mammals. This is due to the amount of time they spend swimming. Polar bears are extremely strong swimmers and they have webbed toes to help them. To dry off, although it seems bizarre, they roll in the snow. As well as being practical, rolling in the snow also looks like a lot of fun. Even with thick insulating fur and a layer of fat, polar bears can still get cold if they are wet in the icy wind. Now he is dry, he can continue on his journey. Over the snow, the bear makes quick progress. But on the rocks, this old bear struggles to keep his footing. And he also may have an injury on his leg, which slows him down. So, as not to waste time, he decides to continue in the water. Now his weight is off his old bones, he can continue faster than he could on the rocks. Some polar bears, although not usually on Svalbard, have to swim miles upon miles to get to land, away from the retreating ice, in search of food in Canada or Russia. As well as the polar bear, Svalbard is home to a more minor predator, the Arctic fox. They are too small to kill anything as big as a seal, but they are expert hunters of birds and small rodents. They usually have their dens at the base of bird cliffs, so their food is right above them. However, they can't climb the cliff. They have to either go for nesting birds, like the little orc, or wait for a bird to die and scavenge it. When their food has been found, they bring it back to the nest for the other cubs and hide it in the rocks so the Glaucus girl doesn't steal it. Then when they are hungry, they can go back to the hole and eat the food. This cub is eating an unfortunate black guillemot, which his mother's found for them. Farther up the slope is the bird cliff. These ginormous cliffs are home to many types of seabirds. One such bird is the Brunich's guillemot. They prefer to nest in colonies of several thousand pairs. They're very common on Svalbard and look a lot like the common guillemot. They have a white stripe down their bill and are slightly smaller. They lay blue pear-shaped eggs to ensure that they don't fall off the edge so that the chicks are safe. They share their huge homes with one of the most common seabird in the Northern Hemisphere, the kittiwake. They are not native to the islands. They migrate here to nest in about March and then leave in September when it gets colder. The summer here is ideal for them to nest. Their food, the Arctic cod, only come to Svalbard in the summer 
and that is what they feed their chicks with. However, instead of catching small fish for the chicks like a guinea mod does, the kitty wake feeds their chick with whatever they have caught, regurgitated. Competition for nests is brutal. A garter is always needed for the nest while the other bird in the pair is out finding food. Without one, the other kitty wakes will steal the nest so they don't have to make one for themselves. If the attacker doesn't leave, they might be forced into a brawl. And these fights can lead to casualties. This is the Glaucus Gull. They are fewer in number than the Kitty Wake, and nest on rocks but still near to the bird cliffs. Like the Arctic Fox, they prey on the bird and the eggs that live on the cliff. This mother has two chicks to raise, and living next to this cliff is a great advantage. Here she has caught a small bird, and is fighting with her chick over it. She wins as she is far stronger, but he is ever hopeful that she will spit it out for him. Unfortunately, she has no intention to. Some birds don't nest on cliffs or rocks. Others prefer it on the ground, like this arctic tern. However, nesting on the ground opens the tern up to predators, but they have an angry temper to make up for it. If you stray too close to the nest, the tern attacks, and will relentlessly peck at you until you are away from the nest. The Svalbard reindeer is a small subspecies of reindeer with stubbier legs and rounder faces. They live in spread out herds, but this mother and calf are wandering by themselves. This calf is about nine months old now, and has grown rapidly during this time, so that come winter, it is strong enough to withstand the cold. Males are larger than the females, and have larger antlers. These are used for fighting and for mating rights, but are handy when you have an itch that you can't quite reach. However, these antlers are shed in October, when the mating season is over. These reindeer have taken to lying on the ice, because with such dense fur for warmth in the winter, the summer gets hot for them, and this patch of snow is perfect for cooling them off. Reindeer are completely vegetarian, and they eat all types of plants that grow on Svalbard. But they do have their preferences, and they walk down the slopes to the richer grass further down. However, some don't want to waste valuable eating time walking, so they run to the next place, leaping over the streams. Some are not so manoeuvrable as others, and don't move with so much speed. The largest and most majestic animal in Svalbard is the humpback whale. Usually, you'll only see their backs and blowholes like this, because they have no reason to go any further out. However, sometimes, when they are catching krill from beneath, they completely launch themselves out the water, and you can see their entire body. Just before a dive, they usually flick their tails out like this to help push them down. Whether predator or prey, bird or mammal, Svalbard is home to all that can survive on the harsh snow and ice.